Jay here from All DTG. Just going to go over a couple Photoshop um, things here to create a um, a file to bring into some of our Chinese software or RIP software like Flexi, Main Top, etc. Um, so, of course, we're going to need Photoshop. So we're going to open Photoshop. And I'm going to do a, I'll have a, I'll do a couple different way. I'll do it a couple different ways for you. Um, everybody knows that there's probably a hundred different ways in Photoshop to do the same thing, but I'm just going to open up, <clears throat> excuse me, a file here. And I just pulled this JPEG offline um, and we'll use this. Now, we really need a transparent background <clears throat> unless you want to just print a big box. So show you a couple different ways to do this. So first of all, we're going to unlock the background. We're going to look at the image size here. <clears throat> image sizes, two inches by two inches, 300 decals, change it to 10 by 10. You know, we can use this. It's probably not going to be the best quality, but you'll see a lot of this from your customers until you train them on what to send you. <clears throat> now, we could go over here to the eraser tool, click it, and I don't think we should sample all layers because we have some um colors in here that may be affected but let's try it okay so yes so we knocked out some of these colors here the true white so we're not going to use um <clears throat> we actually sampled all layers right here when we pick our eraser tool it gives you some options here so we're going to unquick sample all layers and try anti-alias Still the same thing, just pulling it out. Let's try the last one, contiguous. <clears throat> that, seemed to, that seemed to have did it pretty good. So this is one way of doing it, but we can do so, so once we get to this point, we have to, um, we actually hover over the thumbnail and we can select pixels. And it selects all the pixels all the way around. And this is, this is, um, this is one way to get the pixels selected. Um, The next way is mouse. I think the battery is going dead in my mouse. So the next way to do this is we could actually choose our um, our magic wand tool. All right. So our magic wand tool. So what we're going to do with this magic wand tool is we're going to it, we we get the same same um, options here. So we can go over here and we can just click the artboard and you see how it clicks everything in here. We don't want that. So we're gonna change this to contiguous like we did the last one and click it. And basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna click, it's gonna marching ants around here and it's selected our image, the outside of our image like we want. And we're just gonna hit the delete and there's our uh, background removed. Now, doing it this way, we have to um, we have to in we have to inverse the the uh, the image. So we inverse it. Then we can go over here and make our spot channel. See how it does that. 
Now let's say, let's say we didn't, we didn't inverse it. So we'll delete. And it looks like it's selected, okay? But, but what's happening is it's, it's selecting the area around the object. So if we go over here to channels and we try to make a spot channel this way, see it, 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 it added our spot channel to everything but the image that we wanted. So it's important when we do it this way, we select inverse and then the spot channel, okay? So let's go back to this spot channel here. So we have everything selected and we don't have everything selected, hold on. So now we have everything selected, one of the two ways we've shown you. So, <clears throat> In order for Flexi 1921, um, Main Top, some of the normal Chinese or the free type softwares that come with our printers, <clears throat> um, we have to create spot channels. Now, if we were doing fluorescence, we'd have to make spot channels. So, you know, when, when you have a, a printer that is capable of doing all this, you're still gonna have to come back here. So you're gonna have to learn how to use, <clears throat> use um, Photoshop the correct way. So once we have our image selected, the pixel selected, we wanna go over here to the channels layer. And over here in this little corner, we're gonna hit this little box and we're gonna create a new spot channel. <clears throat> now, the first time you do this is probably not going to be named right, but for Flexi users, we need to name it spot underscore white. And that's with a capital W, a capital S, and a capital W. If we were doing, if we were working in main top, if that's our RIP software, we're going to make a capital W and a one for the, for the white layer. Let's say we had a fluorescent printer um, and we had five colors or four colors fluorescent. The last number, <clears throat> the last spot you make, whether it's W1, W2, W3, W4, if you have four spot colors, W5 is going to be your white because that is going to be the, the layer or the channel that prints last. So right now we're just going to leave it for, um, for Flexi. Click OK. So once we have this spot channel made, um, we can turn this, the visibility of this layer off. And we know that <clears throat> our spot, spot channel is made correctly because it's red. Okay. So something I forgot to do, and let's see what happens here. So <clears throat> I need to crop this image down. I'll, you really should be doing this before we go through all those other steps. I just wasn't paying attention. I apologize. <clears throat> so we made the image 10 by 10, but obviously the deer isn't that wide. So we know it's 10 inches tall. All right. It's going to be, looks like it's about six inches wide. So, so if we don't crop it down, we have all that negative space. And when we save this flexi um, main top, even some of your, um, you know, like CAD link, it's all going to see that space around that image is negative space and it's going to want to print it. So you won't be able to nest or 
or place your images close enough to each other, you're going to be wasting a lot of a lot of space here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to save this. So we're going to save as. First time you do this, you might need to save it as a copy because you need to make sure that the spot colors, the layers, and the profile is chosen, okay? Another thing is it has to be a TIFF. <clears throat> Chinese programs read these TIFFs, read these files that are layered and understand where the layers go in the file and how to print them. So we're gonna save this. Next dialog window that's gonna show up is your TIFF, TIFF options. Um, we use LZN compression and you don't want any of these checked. No image pyramid, no transparency. All of this, the pixel order, byte order, layer compression, all this should be um, defaulted to where it's supposed to be. Click OK. And that's it. So that's basically how you take an image with a background. Preferably, we would rather a, a transparent PNG. But so long as it's 300 DPI, size it correctly, you can use one of the two methods that I showed you, either the eraser tool or the magic wand. So hope this helps. Um, obviously this is a new channel. Um, I, I'm not very good at this. So sooner or later we'll have a like and a subscribe button and, um, and hopefully you'll share this and find it useful. Thank you very much.